where we have this this three pronged approach of in studio, on demand, and live. My prediction is that you know. VOD, the pop, the popularity of VOD will continue to expand as more studios just kind of see the value that it can bring. It's it's not even a just in case, it's just another, it's another offering. Welcome to the Video Entrepreneur Podcast, powered by Uscreen.tv. This is your host, Rob Balasabas, head of partnerships here at Uscreen. And this is the podcast that talks about what it takes to build a successful online business. And every week, we'll take you behind the scenes with top video creators, experts, and entrepreneurs to discuss the world of online video and what it really takes to build a thriving video business. Now, in this episode, Mike Schwartz from Soulmark Creative is joining me to talk about the future of fitness as well as how video can be the ideal medium for making a digital pivot. Coming from a background in the fitness industry, Mike and his wife slash business partner are the creative and strategic force behind a number of successful brands in the fitness space, most of which are using Uscreen as well. So without further ado, let's talk to Mike. Hey Mike, welcome to the podcast. Glad to have you here. Uh, welcome. How's it going? It's great to be here. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to have you here. You're like the perfect guy. We want to really talk about, you know, the future of the fitness industry and, you know, how videos are really starting to really empower a lot of, you know, fitness, you know, uh, studio owners and entrepreneurs in that space. You work with a ton of them. And so before we dive into it, do you want to just introduce yourself, take a couple minutes and uh, tell us sort of your, about your business and kind of the backstory of um, Mike Schwartz? Yeah, I'm Mike Schwartz. Nice to meet you guys. I'm the co-owner of Solmar Creative. Uh, we are a digital design studio that specializes in the fitness and wellness space. Our core services typically include branding and web development. Um, having spent about a decade serving this specific industry, we take pride in a lot of the relationships we've built. We're always staying ahead of the trends. We, we like to use technology like Uscreen. And uh, that kind of brings us to where we are today, right? Um, we were introduced to Uscreen by one of the top reservation systems in the fitness space, specifically to serve this fitness industry. Um, since then, we've worked with some of Uscreen's larger brands, Walk at Home, uh, The Power of Four by Tony Horton. We're blessed to have these relationships and really s serve this community and this this industry that we that we truly love. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I know you've, you've worked with some of uh, Uscreen's top, top sites and clients and users. So uh, really excited to have and like have you here and just kind of pick your brain about what's happening. Where's the space going? Because, um, you know, we really believe it's definitely going to be more into videos and live streaming and all of that, you know, with the world that we live in now. Um, and so let's like take us back, though. Like, how did you even get into the space? Like, how did you, you know, get into digital marketing and building sites for, you know, fitness owners and stuff? Where did that start? Yeah. Um, well, I mentioned I'm the co-owner of Solmar Creative. Uh, the other half is my other half, my wife, Jenny. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as like the perfect blend of a visionary and practical left brain, right brain kind of thing. Uh, Jenny had a successful design studio. Uh, and was starting to work with some fitness clients just, you know, by chance, by relationships, you know, how, how you get into these things. Uh, and I used to own an indoor golf facility in Manhattan. So okay. uh, we were expecting our first daughter. Uh, I decided to sell the business because it was, while well, I love the business, it was very time consuming um, and uh, wasn't conducive to the, the, the style of life I was trying to, to have. And after taking a few months off with my newborn and being a dad, we decided to join up and grow her design business. Um, we also, you know, we, 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 we lived in New York city and we, we saw the boom of the boutique fitness space. We saw it firsthand. We worked with a lot of those clients, uh, flywheel and the, the various clients that were popping up. So we saw what was happening and we wanted to be a part of it. We love fitness. We really wanted to be a part of it. So we jumped right in and we, we specialized in that space. Um, I feel like, having my golf facility and, and, and having that experience really helps me connect with a lot of clients because I can, I can understand that a lot of the challenges that they go through, uh, it, it seems like, you know, we're just going to build a studio and everything's going to be great, but you have construction delays, you have utilization issues, you have, you have all kinds of things that come up along the way in the challenge of starting your own business. And having been there myself, I often find myself, relating to clients and helping them through that more than just so on like uh we're building you a website uh that, that they can connect and really i can help them help them through a lot more 
Nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah, it's um, you've kind of been through it. And so you can kind of, you know, be empathetic to like what your clients are going through and kind of walk them through, you know, it's a bit of a process, right? Like, you know, building a VOD site doesn't happen overnight. So there's a lot of like waiting and like what's next. Mm -hmm. And so um, that seems to be something that you guys do very well. Yeah. So, yeah, we worked with a lot of clients. Um, you know, generally I, I work with the clients while Jenny can focus on design. And that's the real purpose of this partnership with us. Um, and then when we, we relocated to South Florida in 2016, um, we, we, we really rooted ourselves here by one, solidifying a new business, Solmar Creative, that we co-owners of instead of her business. And we also had our second daughter. So we're, we're, we're loving life here and we really love this industry. No, uh, congratulations, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, right now, as we speak here in Vancouver, where I'm located, like, you know, the, the gyms are closed, like it's been closed for a while. Um, and ha it's been happening, like, you know, it'll be open for a few months and then it'll be like locked down for different reasons. And so, you know, gym owners are like struggling, like where, what are they going to do? Right. So, um, you know, naturally they're starting to look at like, okay, well online, like all the other industries are going online. So, you know, I'd love to hear your experience, um, you know, being sort of like right in the middle of the storm with the fitness industry through the pandemic. Like, how has that been for you and um, your business and, and your clients? Yeah, um, I think that's, you know, complicated is a bit of an understatement. Um, the pandemic has hit the fitness industry extremely hard uh, all over the world. And I think you touched on something there, right? Like I, I live in Florida. And we haven't been as affected because they stayed open most of the time. Uh, you live in Vancouver in Canada where it's a lot stricter and, and we have clients all over the world, you know, um, literally across the globe yeah. and, you know, Africa has been shut down. I have clients in the UK that have been shut down. And, and, and so it's, it's been, it's been a real challenge keeping up with the various regulations, the different guidelines. Um, so it's, it's, it's one of those things that, we just have to stay as a, as a somewhat of an advisor. A lot of the times we have to stay on top of what's happening everywhere. And it's been a real challenge, not just, not as much as for the clients, but you know, we just want to be here for them as much as possible. Um, before the pandemic, we knew very little about video on demand. Uh, I would now consider myself an expert and it all started back in March 2020 when one of our longtime studios came to us and said, we're going to sit down and film six weeks of content over the next four days. And when we're done, we need a site and we need to do it. We, we have no idea what to do or how to do it, but we need a site. So we've been working with them for years. We know their brand, they trusted us and we just went out and did it. And um, within probably two weeks later, they had 1500 subscribers and they were able to pay their employees when most studios were shut down and had no revenue. Um, using that kind of template that we built for them and that kind of just get it done quickly. Yeah. Uh, within the next couple of weeks, we did a, another five VOD sites. And, uh, you know, at the, uh, just knowing during that time of uncertainty, um, it, it was rewarding for us to be able to help studios generate a little revenue, have something to offer their clients, and most importantly, keep that connection with the community that they've built over the years. Because, yeah. what you know, these isolations have been so hard keeping communities together. Yeah. So, you know, you're working with a lot of, you know, fitness brands and studios. And so what, what is the process, right? Because, you know, how do you then, you know, advise, you know, a fitness brand that approaches you? What's, what's sort of like the initial steps that you guys determine? Like, is this a fit? Are you guys kind of, you know, set up to do online VOD? Like, what is that, you know, initial couple, you know, interactions with, with uh, Soulmark look like for, for you guys? Yeah, the, the process to working with us, whether it be a VOD site or a branding project or a website, it always starts with understanding the clients and their business. So I'll have, I'll have an initial call just to, to make sure we're on the same page and we, we understand um, you know, what the client's business does, what their core offerings are, what makes them special, and, and what are their goals. Um, you'd, you'd be surprised how many people I speak to can't articulate the goals they want to achieve uh, with whatever product they're coming to us to build. Um, and it's hard to provide a solution um, when I don't really understand what, what you even want. 
So that's the first thing I try to flush out of every client. What are you trying to accomplish here? How are we going to provide you with a solution for the, for your clients? Yeah, and, and what is that usually? Is it usually like, I just, I just want to stay in business or I want to just continue? I mean, I imagine it's just like, I want to stay in business. We just want to keep the lights on and like the revenues going and like these memberships, you know, serving our clients. Because most of them, I imagine, have a recurring like a subscript, a membership, you know, model for their in-person business. And so, so is it just a matter of like, okay, let's figure out how you translate this online. Is that. Yeah. I, I've seen a lot of changes over the last two years of how this has been approached. I, I, like I said, at first it was, I just need something. I need something mm -hmm. to offer my clients right. and I don't want it to be Facebook or Facebook <laughs> live or behind some kind of password protected thing that we've scratched together. Right. Um, so now it's it's really starting to become a core piece of people's business mm. uh, and we're seeing it more and more clients are are trying to use video on demand to expand their reach and just offer it as a core piece of what they're doing mm. um, yeah yeah it's just becoming is it are there any clients that you can recall that like the online thing has become sort of the the primary offering and like the second the in-person is like if we want to you know like if we feel like yeah. it, we'll do it like yeah, we really want to focus on growing the online side of things yeah i i've i've unfortunately seen um some businesses close but mm. they still have a really great community so they've went full virtual um it, it, it's afforded a lot of people the opportunity to stay in business when the overhead of a physical space that they put their heart and soul into building just isn't there anymore, right? The, 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 because of whatever reason, government regulations, people aren't ready to go back into a space. They're not comfortable with it. Um, being able to just say, forget that. I can film content wherever I go in the world. I can be a traveler and just enjoy myself and build content and still have that connection to my, you know, my tribe, my people. Yeah, Mike, any, um, you know, just thinking there's going to be a lot of, you know, uh, fitness owners and business owners just, you know, sort of tuning in here, listening, watching this, um, this episode, and just curious, you know, do, if you had any advice um, for them on how to really start thinking about launching a video on demand uh, site. Yeah, a um, couple main things. Uh, one, I know it's cliche, but let's just keep it simple, right? Focus on what you do best. If you have a core offering that you have, focus on that and really do it well. Um, two, be consistent. I think having consistency is key. I, a lot of I see a lot of people like over promise and under deliver. So I'm going to do a live every three days, and then yeah. it turns into a week, and it turns into a month, and then people people tune out. So those are two really main things. I really think do what you do best and be consistent. Um, on top of that, I think we need to really start thinking this is not being temporary, right. right? I think early on, this was just like, get me through the next three months. You know, I, I gotta get through the next three months. And I, I would say, I would push back on, on a lot of people and say, no, we, like we really need to think about this as the next 18 to 24 months. What are your goals over yeah. the next 18 to 24 months? Because this is a commitment you need to make now mm -hmm. that will help your business two years down the road. And if you can think, start, you know, start thinking about how you, you want this to, develop and what kind of offering you want this to be, I think that'll be uh, a better point. I've had clients who come to me at the beginning, they're like, I have five videos, can I launch? And I'm like, yes, as long as you know where you want to be two, four, eight, ten months from now. Right. Um, and, 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 and going back to what we were talking about before, that could be a mix of live, on demand, in person, those things really feed off of each other. Mm -hmm. So you have, you know, if you have a studio, and you're running a live class based off of the class that your students are, you know, you're, you're, they're, they're attending in person. You just film that class yeah. as long as you can do it with high quality, obviously certain types of classes, lighting and the sound might be problematic, but you, you, those are challenges you can figure out. You can feed that directly into your on-demand and build up your library. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. And it's really understanding what you're good at and how you can maintain consistency. Because consistency, keep it simple, be consistent. Um, what is, you know, what's what's a typical 
like timeline, just expectations. What are some of the, maybe some of the things that people are, the expectations versus reality, you know, when launching a VOD site, um, obviously it doesn't happen overnight. There's a bit of work to do, right? And mm -hmm. so um, what, what are some of those expectations that you're having to like kind of debunk, you know, with your yeah. clients? Well, with us in particular, we do everything. We try to make everything custom to your yeah. brand and to your experience. So there's a little bit more than just dropping things into a template, right? Mm -hmm. we, we come up with a plan that's based on content. Uh, so we are content driven in every single way. We want to really understand who you are. So the first part is really getting that content together. And if, if you're not prepared with how you want people to see you and we can help with that, but if, if you're not prepared to tell us like, this is my offering and this is what I want to deliver to, to people. And this is how I want people to understand and use my product, then that might take a little time to do. Uh, I'd say beginning to end of a project, some might be quicker, some might be longer, but anywhere from, let's say, three to five weeks, three to, you know, three to six weeks uh, is a realistic timeline to gather content, review content, images. Um, you know, we don't like using stock photography. We want to see you, your, your people, your instructors. We want it to be as personal as possible because that will drive the right results. Um, so, yeah, that's that's realistically... People want it tomorrow and they're like, right. I need it up in a week. And I'll say, well, it's just not realistic. We need to, we need to take the time to understand what we're building mm -hmm. and it, it'll make a huge difference in the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, one of the, one of the important things, and I think a lot of um, membership site owners, there's like kind of two stages, right? You're building your site content, everything that you just talked about, Mike, and really trying to like wrap your head around the distribution of it. Like what am I putting in here versus YouTube? Right. What am I doing, you know, differently? And so what are some of the, you know, like talk to me a little bit about the marketing side, like because the marketing I am assuming doesn't start when the when the site is launched. Like I'm assuming there's some things that are already being like, you you know, you're planting like, you yeah. know, um, you know, the launch before like you're pre-launch and all that. So talk to me a little bit about that. And, you know, maybe some of the things that somebody that's thinking about a VOD site can sort of start thinking about and planning for. Yeah. Marketing, and I'm going to say this with, with a grain of salt, it, it really depends on the capabilities of the, of, the, of the studio or the company and how much they're willing to invest, right? On a simple level, we want to generate buzz, but not too much buzz. We don't want to generate too much. Well, there's not, never too much buzz. Uh -huh. You don't want to generate buzz too early. Mm -hmm. So figure a couple of weeks before you want to start generating interest, getting people to sign up. Um, gathering emails, just ways to contact people via social uh, and other channels that you have at your disposal. Studios are in a good place to do this because they already have a built-in market, right? They have a, a list of people. They have clients who are coming into their space. Uh, you have instructors who have relationships with clients so you can lean on them to promote throughout, throughout the community in various channels that they have. So studios who have an established client base are obviously an advantage for that. Um, I think in terms of brands who are just getting into VOD and they're only VOD, it's a little bit more of a challenge to generate buzz and you may have to uh, explore some paid marketing efforts and Google and social media and that kind of stuff. But at, at the core of it, it's really about just generating a little bit of buzz and then using the tools that uh, Uscreen has and other you know, available channels, right? So yeah. it, it, it's hard to say there's like a one way to do things, right? Every studio has a different amount of capabilities and a budget, right? So uh, it, it gets into, before you launch, you wanna generate a little bit of buzz. Right. And then when you launch, you really wanna incentivize people. So one of the things I talk about, or I help clients always with is getting set up with the Uscreen built-in tools. Um, I think the abandoned cart is an amazing tool. Um, the, you know, the, there's just a lot of really good tools to take advantage of and everyone should explore those yeah, yeah. In, in a very simple way. Uh, we also like to use, you know, drip campaigns and emails so that when people sign up, we offer them as much value as possible early on. So we'll take it a little step further than the general welcome email with you screen and we'll do a drip campaign that, that maybe has three or four emails that go out during a trial, gives them 
a little bit more navigation of the site, and then also maybe some offers to share it. Um, I personally love affiliate programs. They're wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about that, yeah. screen, but, but just, you know, there's, there's a whole different way to use them when you're, um, when you have a, when, when you have an offering, like, like a, you know, the, you know, a VOD platform yeah. and you have, you can say to someone, you love it, share it with three people and yours is free. Yeah. Right. And then they share it with three people. So you can really use those, those, um, those platforms to your advantage. So they're there and, and, and you screen has done a great job creating integrations with them to make it really simple and easy to set up. So I always try and talk my clients through that as well. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. We really do try to think about not just like building the content and the, you know, the delivery of the content, but th that marketing side is so key. Like, I think that's like such a big part of the success or failure of a VOD, um, you know, site and uh, business. So yeah, no, that's great. I want to loop back around a little bit to what you mentioned earlier about, you know, some of your clients already have this like built in community from their in person business. And so uh, would would be really curious to hear, you know, how are how are you seeing some of those businesses translate that in person community, you know, hanging out and, you know, grabbing a smoothie after her like that, that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore, right? If you're online, and so, or maybe it does virtually, but how are you seeing some of these, you know, entrepreneurs and um, studio owners, really like sort of migrate their community online? And what are some cool ways that they're doing to engage their communities online? Yeah, you took the, the word right out of my mouth. <laughs> engagement. Um, engagement is good. Like you, you just have to constantly be attached to your clients and, and offering them something, right? So um, social media is probably the best way uh, off the site, right? So uh, I see a lot of lives so Instagram live is probably one of the best and easiest ways to connect with people, creating a Facebook group. That's a private group. A lot of our clients do that as well. And, and what's nice about that is that it brings in an element of people talking to each other, sharing their results, sharing what they're doing to stay sane during these crazy times. Mm -hmm. um, but also the challenges that they're having and, and they can share them and talk to each other. And it's, it's a free and open sharing of ideas within a community. And then the moderators or the studio who are nurturing these relationships can come in and offer their their thoughts as well. So it's it, you know you, you see a lot of the Facebook groups and and that kind of stuff. It's interesting too because a lot of people want to get off Facebook yeah. and they haven't really figured out a way yet to do that. But um, I know that UScreen has a few things in the works. There's yep. a community feature in beta, mm -hmm. and I'm really excited for it. But You'll tell me when that's ready. When it's ready. Yeah, no, we definitely are. Like community is such a big part of the success of online uh, programs. So yeah, we're definitely working on that. No, that's that's cool. Yeah, it seems like you mentioned there, like I think a lot of lives, live, live streams, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube lives. It's just like that interaction real time, um, you know, and, and it's so cool though, right? Because like now people are, you know, you're able to tap into like your market has just like wide open now, like all over the world. It's not just like your little town or big town, um, it's like all over the world. So, you know, it's, it's, it must be such a cool experience for your clients when they first start seeing like, Hey, somebody from like across the world is like watching our stuff, you know, and, uh, interacting and like is a fan and a customer that must be such a cool experience. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, we, you know, I work with some of like, like we said, I work with some of you screens, larger brands yeah. and, and looking at the analytics sometimes is just wild to see that people are literally tuning in to content from every country around the world. That's crazy. And, you know, it's, it just shows how much reach we really have and how much power we have when we're offering good content mm -hmm. and we're offering, you know, healthy lifestyles and it's what people crave and want. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, again, again, it's just, it's just so cool. Cause like you're, you're, you're hearing all of these stories and you're, you know, like if, I'm assuming one of the passions or one of the missions of a lot of your clients, especially in the fitness space, is like to help other people improve their lives and, you know, be healthier and live longer and, you know, all that stuff. Like, it must be so so cool for them to see, like, all the stories coming in and, you know, affecting more lives. So, yeah, that's awesome. Um, what is your prediction? You know, as we, you know, are, it's been a couple years into this pandemic now. And, you know, what's your prediction for the fitness industry, you know, for this year? or like the next two or three years? Like, 
Are we just gonna yeah. like? What's your prediction? I don't want to. I don't want to answer it's the hard. question for you. Uh, it's uh, it's hard. You know, I think like when this all started two years ago for us, uh, we saw VOD as like something that could help people, um, and I always thought of it as like a longer term. And you know, you have to really take a two to three year approach to what what you were trying to build. Um, but it's quickly become a necessity. And and you know, I said before we have this this three pronged approach of in studio on demand and live that, that just feed each other that feed into this cycle of content that you can build for people. So, um, you know, I think 2020 was really, uh, a weird year. Uh, and I think, unfortunately, I hate to say, I think that 2022 is going to be a lot like 2021 where we're going to see a lot of ups and downs throughout the world with, you know, what's going on. And because of that, there's going to be a lot of inconsistencies. So we have to think about the tools that we have like you screen to, to build in kind of this, like commu- this, this way to reach our community when we can't always be there in person together. So, um, you know, I, my prediction is that, you know, VOD, the pop, the popularity of VOD will continue to expand, um, as more studios just kind of see the value that it can bring. Um, and, and one of the reasons I, I'm saying this is because, you know, even early on this year, one of my success factors is to, to, to see the business coming back. And I saw it a little bit in 2022, 2021, and already more in this year, new studios opening, right? People taking a chance and saying, we're confident that we can go out there and open new studios. And this is a really good sign for the industry. Um, and with all of those that I've been approached with this year, they're already thinking, they haven't even started construction. They're already thinking about having a VOD offering. So uh, I think that's just going to become more of the norm. And I, I think it should because it's really a tool that brings a lot of value to, to, to studios. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm of the same. I think this year is going to be sort of lot, lots of ups and downs, like you said. And um, you almost want to like don't get caught in that again where like your in-person business is like it's it's not you can't run it um you almost want to just like think ahead because you want to just protect your business right and have that offering just in case you know and then maybe it could be almost your primary offering it's it's not even a just in case it's just another it's another offering right um whether or not you can stay open as a studio your 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 students might not feel comfortable going in one week or the next week um you know we had here in florida we had a recent, you know, spike and nothing closed and people make choices, right? Right. I don't want to do this. I do want to do this. So people are going to be in control and they're going to make their own choices. So as a studio, you just need to give people options. And I think that's the best way to, to put it. It's, it's, we're providing more options, which provides more value to our students and our clients. Amazing. Amazing. Well said. Well said. Um, awesome. Uh, Mike, uh, this has been really good, really insightful. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving that you're really like in the middle of all of this stuff that's happening in the fitness industry and VOD and everything. And like I said, you've been helping with like some of our top, you know, users and, um, you know, you're, you're uh, responsible for a lot of people, uh, enrolling in a lot of, uh, courses and programs. So, uh, it's been amazing. Um, what's the best way to connect with you, your business? Maybe people want to reach out and just discuss their plans for VOD businesses with you. What's the best way to do that? Yeah. The best way is through our website, soulmarkcreative.com. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at soulmark creative and, uh, you reach out through there. You'll find us. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Make sure you're subscribed to the show so you don't miss any of the new episodes as they're published. And if you want to learn more about using Uscreen for your business or want to join our affiliate partner program, head over to uscreen.link slash podcast to get more information. And I'll see you in the next episode.